Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. In this episode we're going to be taking a look at soft limits. What they are, how they differ from hard limits, how to set them up and of course some of the pitfalls you can fall into when setting them up. So I've just turned my machine on and the first thing I want to do is I'm going to just jog my x-axis around the table. I'll start by jogging it in the positive direction and as you can see here even though I'm turning the MPG it won't go any further than about halfway across the table. That's because it's actually hit a soft limit. But the machine doesn't know where it is on the table. So let's uh, just jog it in the opposite direction. And what? Well, that's not good. It's now crashed into this side of the axis. Again, it doesn't know where it is. So the way we fix this is we home our machine. Now that we've honed the machine, let's see how it behaves when we move the axis in the positive direction. Now I know because it's homed, I can keep turning this pen as much as I like, and it will not crash into the end of my axis. And did you notice, as it got close to the end, it purposely slowed down and came to a gentle halt. Let's try that again. You can hear the machine slow down and comes to a gentle stop. Let's do the same on the other end. You'll see again, it'll move off to the left hand side there and it'll stop. It knows exactly where it is on the table and it will not allow us to run into the ends of our axis. And that's why we have soft limits. It defines the range of motion that our machine is capable of and then it will restrict us to within that area. Now of course, soft limits are entirely dependent on homing. If you don't home your machine, soft limits cannot work. Homing starts by defining a fixed point on our table and everything flows from that. So if you haven't set up homing first, please watch my video on homing, get that set up, then come back and continue on with setting up soft limits. So what's the difference between soft limits and hard limits? Soft limits are a mathematical calculation. When you home your machine, it defines where X, Y, and Z zero are. In the case of my X axis, I've told it I can move between X zero and X 700. And so long as I stay within that there, Maso will allow me to move. However, should it try and stray outside that area, Maso will bring the axis to a stop. Or, if I'm in the process of machining, will bring up a soft limit warning to let me know that I'm trying to machine outside that area. So if you watched my homing video, you would have seen one of the first steps was to change the soft limit values. The longest axis on my machine is the Y, and it has one meter of travel. I trebled that figure and came up with three meters. I then set the minimum travel to minus three meters, and the maximum travel to positive three meters. That gave me a six meter span of travel. And I put the same values into each axis. So the X, Y, and Z all end up with minus three meters as the minimum, positive three meters as the maximum. Or since this is millimeters, that's 3,000 millimeters. I'm going to start by going into the F1 screen and going to my Y axis. I'm going to change the minimum travel to minus 3,000 or 3 meters and the maximum travel to 3,000. That's 3 meters in the positive direction. I'm going to save that. I'm going to do the same on the X. Minus 3,000 and positive 3,000 and the same on the Z. So basically those figures are relatively ridiculous, especially for the X and the Z, but it is important that we do this. It's going to make the next step so much easier. So the next step is to home our machine, but before we do that, we're just going to take one last check and go into our homing screen. So if we go to the F1 screen, I'm going to pull up the homing screen, 
And we need to check along here the homing position to make sure that all of our settings are set to zero. And you can see here that for some reason my X is set to minus 200. I'm just going to change that to zero. Double check, they're all zeros. Save. And uh, now we can home our machine. By homing our machine, we've brought our X, Y, and Z zero points to this location here. Every time we home our machine, it will come to this exact point, because that's where the homing switches will bring it to. And now we know where it is, we can work out exactly how much travel we have back this way and towards the back of the machine. To the left, to the right, up and down we can set exactly how much travel we have from this point here because we know exactly where that point is. Once we've achieved that, then we can start doing other things. We can tell it exactly where this tool setter block is going to sit if we want it to find it. Likewise, if we have a fixture, we can tell it where that is and we can also tell it where our tool changer is if we're using an automatic tool changer. Everything flows from this one point here. And this point I'm going to call X, Y, and Z zero. Even if it's not, it doesn't matter what you call it, but for simplicity, I'm going to leave all three axes at zero. These are machine coordinates, not working coordinates. So if we now take a look at our jog screen here, we can see that our X, Y, and Z coordinates are all set at zero. Now we can use these figures to set up our soft limits. All we need to do is jog around the table and read from the screen. So let's look at the y-axis first. I'm happy with how far forward the y-axis has come. I don't want to come any further than that. So I can read on the screen, we have y0. So our minimum travel is y0. Let's go into the F1 screen, look at the y-axis, and we'll change our minimum travel to 0. We'll go back to the jog screen and now with our pendant I'm going to jog the y-axis back as far as I feel comfortable with it going and that's about it there. If we now look at the screen we have a value of 1169 millimeters. Let's round it up to 1170. So I'm going to go into the F1 screen, y-axis and I'm going to change that 3000 to 1170 and save. Now let's take a quick look at those figures again. Notice the minimum travel is a smaller value than the maximum and that must always be the case. Always make sure the minimum travel is a smaller numeric value than the maximum travel. Otherwise your axis will only travel in one direction. Okay, we're going to save that. And now you'll see if I bring the axis forward and then run it back, it will stop when it gets to the end there. Likewise, if I bring it all the way forward, it will stop when it reaches the end of travel there. How simple is that? Let's take a quick look at our x-axis. Now our x-axis actually can move back this way a little bit more than it normally would. In fact it'll move to somewhere around here. Let me just go and check. And that looks good because the obstruction on this axis is actually at the rear of the machine here. So if I read the value here I've got a value of 9.8 millimeters. I'm just going to round that down to 9 millimeters. Give myself a little bit of clearance. So I'll go F1 x-axis and I'll change the minimum travel to minus nine millimeters. Again if you come back and read the value here you'll see it's minus 9.8 millimeters so that's why that is the minimum value. Let's move it in the positive direction And I wouldn't like it to get any closer that way either. 
that gives me a figure of 728.9 millimeters i'll make it 728 to give myself a little bit of clearance so we'll go into the f1 screen here x-axis edit that 3000 and make it 728 millimeters save now if i jog it you can see it can't hit the end there and likewise on the other side it won't hit either the last we're going to do is the z-axis now i can move it up a little bit more than it was before and if i read the screen i have a value of z of 4.4 millimeters so i'm going to go into the f1 setting to the z-axis and i'm going to enter four millimeters but this is the maximum travel how high it is is the maximum travel how low it goes is the minimum and again the maximum must always be a bigger numeric value than the minimum so looking at our maximum travel i'm going to put four millimeters save that let's go back into jog mode and we'll jog the machine down Now, I don't think the machine needs to go any lower than that. It's not practical. You're not going to have a cutter that short. In fact, we might just come up a little bit there, maybe somewhere around about that. The y-axis is a bit of a strange one there. It doesn't have a really well-defined bottom limit. You certainly don't want to go any lower than this collet nut, or you don't want this axis to come out of its bearings. So they could be uh, cut-off points for where you put it. But let's read the... Uh, axis there and we are currently at minus 91 millimeters so i'm just going to make it minus 90 into the f1 screen and our minimum travel is minus 90 millimeters and that's it our axes are set it can't go up any higher than there and it can't go down any lower than there how simple is that all by using the screen to read our values. If your homing point's right at the back of the machine, you can still call that X, Y, and Z zero. It doesn't matter, they're just machine coordinates. Machine coordinates are not used for machining, they're only used for the machine to keep track of where the axis is in relation to its limits, where it can find its tool setters, its auto tool changes, and its jigs. It's not something you need to worry too much about. But I'll leave that up to you. This is how I've set up my machine. I think it's a really simple method of doing your soft limits. And it really couldn't be simpler. So did you manage to spot the five pitfalls as we went through our setup? Number one, first set up large values on your soft limits before you start setting all this up. And that way you won't run into those limits while you're jogging around the table. Number two, make sure you ch set your homing values on all your axes to zero. Next, if you're using hard limits, make sure the hard limit is outside the envelope of travel for your soft limits. Otherwise, you'll run into a hard limit before you reach the end of travel for your soft limits. Number four, if you're setting up hard limits, make sure that you have a bit of excess travel beyond that limit so that if you're moving quickly you still will not crash into the end of the axis and lastly and more important than almost all the others make sure that the maximum travel value is a larger numeric value than the minimum travel otherwise you'll end up with a one direction of travel issue and that's where i'm going to leave this episode i hope you've enjoyed it maybe learned something new all that remains for me to do is to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ring that bell so you'll be notified of all new episodes. And in the next episode, we'll be setting up our Auto Tool Zero touch plate. In the meantime, I'll catch you later. Cheers.